The most abiding image of the Bangladesh war is the surrender of Lieutenant General Amir Abdullah Khan Niazi of Pakistan to Lieutenant General Jagjit Singh Arora of India in Dhaka on the 16th of December 1971. As Niazi handed over his revolver to Arora, the large crowd gathered in the racecourse garden outside burst into rapturous celebrations. Niazi had led the surrender of 93,000 Pakistani soldiers, the largest since the Second World War, and this had brought the Third India-Pakistan War to an end. Pakistan was divided and Bangladesh, a new nation, was born. Dhaka is now the free capital of a free country. Prime Minister Indira Gandhi announced in Parliament to loud cheers. Later that day, Indira declared a unilateral ceasefire on the Western Front. The next day, Yahya Khan, the President of Pakistan, accepted the ceasefire. The war was short, swift and decisive. It began on the 3rd of December 1971 with Pakistan launching airstrikes on 11 Indian air stations along the Western Front. In retaliation, Indira declared war on Pakistan and ordered the army to march into East Pakistan for the liberation of Bangladesh. The struggle for the independence of Bangladesh had actually begun in March 1971. In the elections to Pakistan's National Assembly held on the 6th of December 1970, the Awami League, the party led by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman, won an overall majority. But Pakistani President Yahya Khan rejected his claim to become Prime Minister. East Pakistan was separated from the West, with India in between, and although almost equal in size and population, the Eastern wind wasn't liked by the elite of West Pakistan. The Awami League launched protests against Yahya Khan's arbitrary and undemocratic decision, but the Pakistani army, dominated by the West, responded by beginning a brutal crackdown to quell these protests. Hundreds of thousands died in the nine-month-long reign of terror that followed, and thousands of women were raped. Mujibur Rahman was arrested and sent to jail in West Pakistan. The angry Bengali-speaking members of the Pakistani armed forces and police mutinied to fight the government. Camps of Mukti Bahini or the Liberation Army of Bangladesh were set up along the Indian border consisting of former members of the Pakistani armed forces and civilians. Here they were trained in guerrilla warfare. In April, Awami League leaders set up a provisional Bangladesh government in exile close to the Indian border. The Pakistani army's assault was so brutal that in less than a month, three million refugees crossed the border into India. By November, the number had swelled to 10 million, putting a huge economic burden on the Indian government. As the humanitarian crisis deepened, Indira Gandhi asked India's army chief, General Sam Manikshaw, to prepare for war, which looked inevitable. Manikshaw advised her to avoid the monsoon season and wait for winter. With war clouds looming, Indira visited European capitals, Moscow and Washington to apprise world leaders of the atrocities being committed by the Pakistani army and the risk this posed to India's security. Her meeting with American President Richard Nixon in November was especially noteworthy. Nixon warned Indira that the consequences of military action would be dangerous for India. Unfazed by the threat, Indira told Nixon India would be forced to retaliate if Pakistan continued its provocations across the border. The US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger famously described the Indira-Nixon meeting as a classic dialogue of the deaf. Indira emphasized that Pakistan was carrying out a genocidal punishment of the people for having voted democratically. With America stilled towards Pakistan and a US-China thaw beginning earlier in July 1971, India and the Soviet Union signed a Treaty of Peace, Friendship and Cooperation in August. The treaty 
stipulated that the two countries would take appropriate measures in case either country faced a threat to security. Having wrapped up the security pact as a hedge against the US and China's intervention, Indira was now ready for war. Pakistan triggered the war in the hope that the US and China would press for an early ceasefire to delay the liberation of Bangladesh. India was determined to finish the war before the US or China could intervene. On the 6th of December, India recognized the provisional government of Bangladesh. Indian forces, assisted by the Mukti Bahini, ran through East Pakistan and in a flat 13 days, Dhaka fell. After the war, Mujibur Rahman was released from Pakistan's jail. He travelled to Dhaka on the 10th of January 1972 as a leader of the free and sovereign country of Bangladesh. Pakistan had been created on the basis of religion during the partition of India in 1947. At that time, East Pakistan, formerly the eastern part of Bangladesh, was given to Pakistan. 25 years later, the religious identity failed to keep East and West Pakistan separated by over 2,200 kilometers together. Linguistic, cultural and democratic yearnings proved to be a more powerful glue to the creation of Bangladesh than any religious affinity.